you know, one of the reasons I enjoy our friendship so much is that you bring this Russian thing, you know, which I don't really understand it at a deep level. How could I? I'm not Russian, but, um, but this mindset like that there's pain in life. When I watched that uh, Hedgehog in the Fog cartoon, I thought, no wonder Russians call it the way they do. <laughs> this is the most, it's so sad. It's beautiful yeah. and sad, but it's so sad. Whereas out here, it's like Sesame Street. And you know, my mother would not let me watch Sesame Street when I was a kid. Yes, She thought it was too chaotic. She too chaotic. Too chaotic. She was like, it's too chaotic. <laughs> too many things going on. Captain Kangaroo, we were allowed. And then uh, Mr. Rogers, we were allowed. I never really liked shows. I, I liked doing things in outside in the, mm. in the yard. Um, I was trying to trap all the animals. I didn't want to watch stuff on TV. But, you know, Hedgehog in the Fog is enough to turn any kid into a, a thinker and a philosopher and a poet. Here we go. I fell in love with this when, when you showed. Look, it even walks with its arms behind its back. So for people who don't know and we're watching little clips here to get into it. And it, it, it's, it's a hedgehog that is wandering about in this fog at night and- you Can't even see a lamp. The and, fog is so and, dense. And there's a, there's a feeling of searching. And then there's a, there's a horse that speaks from, from a distance, words of wisdom. Some people actually told me that they believe that's God. That's supposed to represent God, I always, thought it was a motherly voice or a voice, a, a, a voice of conformity that wants you to return to safety. And here's a, the, the hedgehog is searching for something that's in him for the unknown, to the explore the unknown. And ultimately as it, um, as the cartoon unrolls, it's, he discovers a friend in a bear and he also discovers a, a lifetime passion for looking up at the stars and the curiosity of exploring what is up there. And I, I see that as science, as, as exploring the mystery. And also I see that as brave to explore the mystery given all the uh, uncertainty all around you. But there is a melancholy, the whole sound of it, the feel of it, the look of it. It was, um, it just captures both the melancholy and the wonder of childhood, which is like, there's a loneliness to it. Like nobody understands me. Uh, that's there that that children can 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 feel because you're you're trying to figure that's out. My this. favorite character right there. I love <laughs> the owl. I love the owl. The owl shows up every once in a while. I love the owl. Sorry, I, I interrupted you the, there's, again, again. There's non sequitur. <laughs> it means you're interested seventy percent of the time. The other thirty percent, you're just an asshole. <laughs> so you have to figure out. Which, so which I'm one told. Is. The uh, there's non sequitur parts in this cartoon. It's it's voted as one of the greatest cartoons of all time. Short short little films, documentary filmmakers. It's a it is um, you know in, in the Soviet Union in in a lot of sort of authoritarian regimes. There's channels to communicate difficult ideas to people, and you figure out those channels and. In the Soviet Union, one of those channels was uh, children's cartoons. So you're actually, they're very much for adults. Yeah, I I like that um, in some countries, not so much in the US, uh, children are treated with more respect for right. their intelligence, you know, that, and not constantly getting this drivel of, of just kind of moronic explosions and whistles and bells and the, the voices that, um, just kind of, you know, d children obviously are children and need to be, their brains are young and plastic and need to be, um, treated and nurtured, uh, as such, but they, but they have an intelligence. And I think that, um, you treat them like morons and, and they're going to behave like morons. You treat them as, you know, people who can, uh, consume information and make sense of it in their own way. And, that's what they're gonna do. Well, they have a seriousness of looking at the world. I love people I, uh, uh, that talk with children like they're adults. Well, this, well, like you're as if you're talking to a mini Einstein because you're like really, uh, they're asking some big questions. And I think, uh, I mean, people sometimes uh, speak of me in this way, like how dumb is this childlike person? But like, no, no there's intelligence in these dumb, simple questions. In like a, that a child asks, and I always love those questions, the simplicity, but also the depth of the those those questions. The, the reason I started watching your podcast was you did an episode early on with Ray Dalio, yeah, and 
the first, maybe the first, but a question that you definitely asked him was you just said, what is money? <laughs> and his answer was fantastic. It's, an, it's a superb question and he gave a superb answer. And I never would have thought to ask that question. And it's, it's the question. And it was the question to tee things off with. Um, so simple questions that get right to the heart of the matter. You know, and kids aren't often putting the same uh, cultural filters and, um, you know, they're not, kids gen generally aren't c concerned about getting canceled either. Right. Um, so they'll ask the question that no one else is willing to ask. And they're not concerned about the, how uh, dumb the question sounds. I, I find the most fascinating questions are just r really, really simple. And it is a, a bit embarrassing to ask those simple questions of what, like, what is well, anything? Well, you're asking them for all of us, so please ask them. Um, I think that question, what is money, is crucial. And I think the simple questions are the most, obviously the most interesting.